let's welcome off stage now. Please, if your hands are not too busy, can you jam those hands together as we invite the set man for this evening's program, Pastor Ebolua Olufemi. If those hands are not busy, can you jam those hands together? Thank you very much. Um, it's a great privilege for us to be together again. Igwe, that was powerful. Let's appreciate him. Powerful, powerful. I also want to appreciate um, Minister Ike that just stepped down from the stage. I want to appreciate everybody that is here today. I want you to know that the few minutes we are going to spend together is going to be fulfilling. Praise the Lord. How many of us here stay around this area? You live around this area. Let me see your hand. Where do you live? Guinness. Okay. That's Guinness Market side. Is that where you stay too? Where do you stay? Mongoro. You are in this area. You are still in Ageke local government. Where do you stay, sweetheart? Raji. You are in this area. Okay. Okay. Let me see again. You stay in this area. Let me see your hands. Where do you stay, sweetheart? London. You are in this area. <laughs> you are in this area. Okay. Okay. Can you imagine you staying in this area and suddenly you got a job in Lekki? And that means you need to pack your load and go to Lekki. And you get to Lekki and you discovered that suddenly the evenings are like the day. Why here in the evening everybody is inside the house? That's a transition. Because suddenly you move from a particular way you live to another way you are not used to. Are you getting me? Transition simply means a change of lifestyle. And tonight, I'm not going to play with you because, you see, a lot of people in church, what they don't know is that every day, gradually, transition is taking place. Huh? And the good news is this. After this program, you will take advantage of what you have had and make the most of your own transition. Is that clear? Is that clear? Let us pray together this evening. Father, we thank you. Speak to us in a way we will understand. Minister to everyone. Guide us with your counsel. And let each one here get adequate wisdom for their transition. In Jesus' name, amen. Please kindly put your phone in silence. Kindly take your seat. Let me tell somebody I celebrate and value you. Okay. I'll use a biblical story to explain a life principle. Is that okay? Is that permitted? Okay. The children of Israel had been in Egypt for 430 years. How many years? To put it in perspective, they had been there for four generations. A generation is 100 years. So they've been there for 400 years. For those 400 years, they were in slavery. What were they in? I can't hear you. Come here with me. Slavery. You've read the story. For those 400 years, somebody else determined when they eat. Because when you are in prison, they tell you when they bring your breakfast. They tell you when they bring your lunch. They tell you when they bring your dinner. Are you following? The children of Israel were in prison. So, they were getting food from Pharaoh. Are you following? When it was time for their breakfast and they didn't bring it, they shout, is it not time? And they'll bring the food. They had been there for how many years? 
And so, they have developed a culture of dependency. What was the culture they did? Of what? They depended on somebody else to think on where they would live, think on what they would eat, think on when they would marry, think on what they would do at every particular time. And suddenly, freedom came. And in Exodus chapter 13, people who had been in a particular environment lived a particular life where somebody else was the one who decided what will happen and when it will happen. They had freedom. They left Egypt. They found themselves in the wilderness and suddenly they did not know that the transition had taken place. So, when they were hungry, instead of thinking of how to make their own food, they started shouting again at Moses. Moses! Where is our food? And Moses looked at them. You think you are still in prison? You are no longer in prison, no? Are you with me? The danger and the lesson from this biblical story is that people who have lived all their life depending on others find it difficult to stand alone. Am I talking to somebody? What do they do? They find it difficult to stand alone. And most singles don't know that some of the things you are doing today is because all your life you have what? Dependent on others to take decisions for you. I have seen people tell me and I've asked them, what do you want to do in life? My dad said I will be a doctor. Now you can depend on your dad to go to primary school. You can depend on your dad to go to secondary school. But you cannot depend on your dad to go to the university. It has to be a collaboration between you and me. Are you with me? Huh? Because at the end of the day, he's not the one that's going to be a doctor. You are the one that's going to be a doctor. Am I talking to somebody? Now, your mom can say, you are going to be a nurse. And you accept. Why? At that point, you are moving from dependence to what? Independence. Your friends can't get and say, marry that guy. They are not going to live with him. Are you with me? No matter how close they are to you, they are not going to live with him. You are going to live with him. So, it has to be an independent decision. Are you getting me? So, they left Egypt, but Egypt did not leave them. So, every time they talked, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Because for once, when you are free, and which is what every single wants, you all want to be free. You want to sleep where you want to sleep. You want to have your own kind of guy. You want to have your own kind of lady. But I want to give you the first principle of independence now. The more freedom you want, the more responsible you must become. The more freedom you want, the more responsible you must become. Because freedom simply means what? Responsibility. The children of Israel wanted to be free from Egypt. That was not wrong. What was wrong is that they wanted to be free, but they don't want to be responsible for the freedom. Can I go a bit further? The more you want to enjoy freedom, the more freedom we demand responsibility from you. Are you with me? What singles want is freedom without responsibility. So they get into trouble. You don't understand? Let me explain. The reason why God says and expects that sex will happen in marriage is because the freedom to have sex comes with the responsibility. Am I making sense to you now? Because one, if you get pregnant, who owns the child? Who trains the child? Who pays for the nappies? Who pays for na- seri lack? So God expects that if I am to have sex with a woman, I must have come into the responsibility of you are my husband, I am your wife. We owe each other to take care of this child. So because we don't teach people responsibility before we give them freedom, we have the catastrophe we have now. Am I communicating to you? Are you getting my point? So it's not enough for us pastors to come and tell you sex is not good. Uh, you, you are a stupid girl. You have liver. Which will explain to you why you must understand the procedure. Are you following? One of my sons, about four and a half years ago, got admission into the university. And they required that for you to just accept 
that he will come and do interview. They have not accepted that we enter university. She come and pay fifty thousand. The first thing I told my wife is there is nobody that they did not plan for, and they gave back to that they will pay fifty thousand for. So from the gate till we got to where they're going to interview, everyone I saw, I saw people who had prepared for marriage, who had planned for the children they have, and who are ready to pay. Are you getting me? Why? The more freedom you want, the more responsible you must become. The children of Israel, they wanted freedom, but they don't want to be responsible. So every time there was a problem, they look for somebody else to blame. Are you with me? Are you with me? Listen to me, ladies in particular. The more you want guys to do anything to ask for your hand in marriage, the more valuable you must become. Whatever any other lady carries, are you following? Does not add value to you. Am I talking? Whatever any other lady, every other lady carries sexual organ. So if you claim you have sexual organ, that's why they are following you. You lie. That is as common as every woman on the street. But what differentiates ladies in the world is the value you carry. When guys find out that the value you carry is far above every other woman, then you can see seven people asking for your hand in marriage. But when you don't carry a different value, okay, let me stop there. Let me open it in a better way. You can use all your life to paint powder, but if you don't have brain, you won't last. Even a market girl selling tomatoes in Dokemu market can paint her face. So powder is limited resource. What do I call it? Very limited resource. But investment in your mind is an unlimited resource. So don't zero in only into how to dress. Zero in on content. Zero in on what? Content. When I was on campus, I told my colleagues when we went to university, I said, I can never marry somebody who didn't go to school. I wasn't joking. Because when we talk about unequal yoke, people think it's only unbelievers that are unequal yoke. When an educated man marries an uneducated woman, it's unequal yoke. Are you following? There's no balance. There are some parties you can't go with at all. And there are some parties you can't go with him too. <laughs> Are you following? Because when they speak English, you just be smiling. Not because she wants to smile. She doesn't want to miss the mark. Are you with me? So, responsibility is what you need for transition. What do you need? Responsibility. For what? For transition. What I see today are guys and ladies who don't understand that it is content that gives container value. You have heard before, oh, there's even between container and content. But most importantly, it is what? Content. That put what? Add value to container. Please, sir, let me bring that bottle. Thank you. Now, this bottle, the content is water. If I brought another bottle and it's, the content is coke, but they are both plastic, why are they not selling for the same price? Eh? Why? Because every woman has the same container body. But what as value to them is the content in the container. So if this was a bottle of Coke, are you following? They won't sell it for 15 naira Because of the content. Although it may be the same plastic bottle. Are you getting me? So ladies and guys, hear me. If you want more freedom, invest in your content. What do you do? Don't say I'm a Christian. Don't say I go to winners. I go to... Uh, Christ Embassy. All those things are identities. Are you following? When we get to the bottom line, you are not going to marry Christ Embassy. You are not going to marry Livingstone. <laughs> you can use that one to camouflage. It is your content that sells you. What sells you? Your content. Your content. Thank you, sir. Did you get it? So let's start with the number two thing that you must know when you are Transiting from dependence to independence. There are two things Stephen Covey taught in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. There is private victory and public victory. There's what? 
Eh? And what? You are not saying it loud. Say it louder. I know you are hearing it for the first time. Don't worry. Private victory and public victory. Let me get down to what private victory is all about. A lot of times, young people, when you are transiting, you don't win with yourself, but you want to win with others. Are you getting me? <laughs> winning with you is more important than winning with me. Let me put it in the way you will understand. Intrapersonal relationship is more important than interpersonal relationship. Excuse me, sweetheart. Do you enjoy you when you are alone? If you do, then you have private victory. There are people in this hall, one the bad row. They can't stay in one place. They are always looking for somebody to relate with, to be alive. The first thing you know when independence comes, when you can be by yourself without missing anybody. That's what we call private victory. Let me bring it to scriptures. Nobody can love his neighbor than he loves himself. You are only able to love others as you love yourself. So if you don't love you, who told you you can love me? Are you getting? That's what I mean by intra-personal relationship. It's more important than what? Inter- the reason why people who make other people laugh commit suicide is because they can't live with themselves. The reason why some people are depressed is because they cannot live with themselves. For you to mature in life, you must learn to live with you. Did you read the scripture? Adam was lonely, so God gave him a wife. Is that not true? Eh? Eh? You are wrong. Adam was not lonely. Adam was alone. There are two different things. <laughs> the word alone is a compound word. All one. All to himself. As a matter of fact, let me shock you. Adam was not looking for a wife. It was God who suggested that it's not good that man should be alone. So, before Adam met Eve, Adam was enjoying himself. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. You are not yet matured. You are not yet able to stand on your own if you don't enjoy you. The reason why most singles are looking for relationships is because they are empty. They are looking for somebody. Adam was all one. For lost of word, we call it alone. We remove one eye. Are you getting me? He was not lonely. If you are lonely, you have low self-esteem. I don't need you to authenticate me. You have a right to your opinion. If you don't like me, that's your business. I like myself. So when we talk about people who are independent, there are people who don't need you to be happy. So private victory is you loving you. Please tell your neighbor, do you love yourself? Now, look at this. Sweetheart, a guy is smoking in the am. Shh, shh. He said, I love you. Are you getting me? The question you're asking me is, before you love me, first love yourself. Because you don't have capacity to love me if you are killing. So, some ladies are really deaf and dumb on the guy. He's already showing you that <laughs> me, I don't love me, oh, but me, I want to love you. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to school. I'm going to work. You cross leg. And in the evening, you wear jeans and put on perfume. And you say you love me. <laughs> you are a joker. You are a joker. You don't love you. So you can't claim you love me. The first year stick, when somebody proposed to you, when somebody says I'm interested in you, it's not if you love me. The first question you should be asking her is, does this person love himself or love herself? The person has to prove to me that the person loves herself or himself before I can even be considering whether you love me. Hello. Are you getting it? Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, not more than yourself. So most times when I sit down in my office and they come, they say, um, sir, we are planning to get married and you don't have a job. How do you want to prove that you love me? Eh? Somebody say, don't worry. Worry you. <laughs> Worry you. What did I say? 
worry you. Because there's a difference between I love you and let's spend the rest of our life together. One is a statement. The other is a responsibility. Did you get it? One is what? A statement. A statement. The other is what? Excuse me, sir. When landlord comes to your house, do you say I love my wife? <laughs> you know what I'm and so what? Pay me my money. That's responsibility. You take your child to the crutch or to school and they say pay. You say I love my wife. <laughs> they say, Let's check in for a psychiatric problem. <laughs> So the first thing you develop when you are transiting from dependence to independence is what? Private victory. And private victory is defined in scriptures as loving you. Because you have no capacity, no matter who you are, to love others more than the way you love yourself. Are you getting me? Did you enjoy yourself now? So I've given some ladies clue to how to handle guys. Just ask yourself, this guy, does he love himself? Because he cannot love you more than he loves himself. You ask, what are your plans for tomorrow? You are my plan. <laughs> Just know you are in trouble. <laughs> Nobody tells you you are my plan. I asked one guy one time, I said, what was the first gift God gave to man? He said, woman. <laughs> I love, I love, I love. <laughs> that can't be the first gift. God will never make that kind of mistake. Hmm. The first gift God gave to man, I've taught some people here, severally. I will ask some people here. I know you are very brilliant. What was the first gift God gave to man? Soul. Soul. Authority over... Dominion. Oh, that's what you mean. Let me clap for him. You are wrong. Very wrong. Try, Jerry. What a guy cannot do. A sister can do better. Yeah. yeah. No idea. Okay. Yes, you. Yes. No idea. With all the uh, safari. One try. Again. From dominion to what? <laughs> to glory. Is bread. Bread. Oshe. God bless you. <laughs> Clap for him. God first gave man bread. <laughs> you that you are laughing, oh yeah? <laughs> yes, now. <laughs> what the first gift to? <laughs> Laughter. <laughs> Guys, the first time God will mention man and the gift that God gave to man is so important that you know it. Because when it comes to you becoming independent, in case they've shattered that gift, it's going to affect you. The first gift God gave to man was image. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, then they can have dominion. No image, no dominion. That was the first gift. It is that image that we call self-esteem. The first gift God gave to man was image. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Without the right self-concept. Are you following? You will make decisions for the wrong reasons. Are you following? Did you come and say, please come, happiness. Come, Richie. Come, Don. Just hold Richie's hand like that. Come. Quickly, let me make this illustration. You will enjoy it. Sorry. Now, both of us are holding ladies, right? Are you following? Now, we could be doing the same thing, but for different reasons. Are you getting? This guy may be going out with this lady because he feels that if I go out with this lady, people will respect me. This guy may be going out with this lady because this girl, this lady, are you following? Guys have been chasing her to prove that I can conquer lady, go out with her. So, but on the outside, we, the general public, looking at them, We'll be saying they are going now, but we don't know the reason behind the relationship. Are you getting me? Now, get it right. Even though we see the same thing, self-esteem is what defines whether you got it right or you got it wrong. Are you with me? So today, what we see most guys do, 
Are you following this? Because they have the wrong self-concept. They go into a relationship for what? The wrong reasons. And guess what happened? Most of those relationships don't last. Because once you get it wrong from the beginning, what happens? You get into the middle. Say, okay, what shall we be doing now? Now that I have proved to everybody I can go out with her, what's the next step? No step. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you see some people they go out with each other, then when one gets to university, oh no one shame more because you have now come to an understanding that what were we doing? I must have been stupid. So all these things begin with what? The right self image. And that's why I asked how many of you live in this environment? If you live in this environment, you must understand that you must fight to protect your self image. You must what? Please take your seat. God bless you. Fight or what? Protect your self-image. Once I went to visit my friend in Lekki. And when we got there, it was not difficult to find a place to meet. There are many, many places that decent people can meet. Not here. If you have to watch any film, you go as far as you can. So I'm going to go too far. But I promise you, if you are going to be among those who will support us, the express center we want to build, there's going to be a cinema. Where decent people can go. Every day of the week. Not that, uh, why must we go to Ikeja before we find somewhere to sit? Then you now see all of you go and be taking picture. <laughs> I just been <feel> laughing. <laughs> It's so bad. What you see here are nightclubs. Am I lying? Only nightclubs. And when you go there, you'll be amazed that the kind of people there are not the kind of people you mingle with. I'm not even talking about what they are smoking. I'm talking about the fact that they have no work. You need to stand around people who will give you cross-pollination. People who will say things that you go home and be thinking. Not people who will say things and wonder, ah, where did you get the money you got from? You are very dumb. So self-image. And our self-image comes from three things. Let me quickly take it, then I round up. The first is your upbringing. Please say it loud. My upbringing. Say it loud. My upbringing. I'm still talking about moving from dependent to independence. There's a people, the way they brought them up, they can never be independent. It's not a lie. Huh? You want to go from here to Ikeja. Are you following? They carried you with car from age one to age 20. So you know no bus stop. <laughs> you know no bus stop. Listen to me. I'm talking to every one of you here. There's a way they must not bring you up. If they bring you up like that... They have shattered your ability to stand by yourself. My father, when I was going to do jam, he told me the jam office in Ikoi, he said, this is money. Enter Moto to Oshodi. From Oshodi, go to Kappa. From Kappa, you will see LMTS that will take you to Ikoi, to the front of jam office in Ikoi. I said in my mind, wicked, 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 wicked. Wicked, wicked daddy, you have a driver, you have a staff car. Why will you just go ahead? I didn't know to teach me to be independent. So I went to Osho D reluctantly. I joined the queue, then entered LMTS and held like this. And he took me from Osho D to Ikoi. And I got to jump office in Ikoi. And I saw the crowd that were checking their result, fighting and fighting. And I fought too to check my result. <laughs> and when I got back home, he said, how was it? I said, fine. Because it must be fine. <laughs> then one day, one of our drivers told my wife, he said, there is no place in Lagos pastor does not know. Only God knows how we got to know it. My upbringing. My upbringing. My parents early in life began to remove everything that would stop me from being independent. Are you getting me? They will tell me, your grandma stays in the better. 
you will enter bus from here to Yaba. From Yaba, you will enter Oyibo. When you get to Oyibo, drop. From Oyibo, trek and look for Ondo Street. Ah. Hey. Before I knew what was happening, there was nowhere I couldn't go in Lagos. But there are people looking at me. All your life, if you're even going from here to Paco, they will carry you there. You know nothing. So the first thing that helps you to be independent is what? The quality of your upbringing. And what is going on now in Nigeria? <laughs> Why were we talking about some people don't even have any upbringing? They are down. They are what? Down. One of my sons, I don't know whether he's here. We held a program last two Sundays ago, Abi. <laughs> we wrote on the invitation card dress officially. <laughs> when this my son showed up, <laughs> he showed up with slippers. <laughs> His jeans was like the jeans of a drummer. I told him, if you near that gate, I sent him back home. Because ordinary dress code some of us don't know. You are going for an interview. You want Kara. Ah! Your upbringing has worked against your destiny. <laughs> Anytime you are invited to anywhere question official or unofficial that determines your dressing, not the clothes you have in your wardrobe. In case you wore shirt and trousers yesterday and that's the only shirt and trousers you have and you are invited to an official, you better wash that shirt overnight and wear it again. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about understanding where you are. So wearing the same shirt every day is not a problem. If it has to be, do it. You will still change levels. Are you with me? You wore Ankara and they wanted to interview for a bank job. And you now showed up. You have got two one in the university. That two one has no value because people will first see you before they hear you. So if you misrepresent what you have, you are gone. Are you with me? They say, hey, our pastor has come, our pastor has come, our pastor has come, and now came. And the next thing you saw was that my shirt, as I did like this, place the Lord, my shirt has come. <laughs> the first thing you say in your mind, which kind of pastor is this? You will, you have heard me before I talk. So all the time I'm talking, your eye will be going there. <laughs> you won't know where your eye will be going there. You will not be looking at my mouth against your eye. Like, which kind of pastor is this? Uh-uh. Didn't they tell him before he left home? So your upbringing is a powerful force. Every time, listen, the rich want to send their children to school, they are choosy. They understand the power of upbringing. They know where you go, determines what you become. They know where you go, determines the kind of people you meet. You can never find the rich sending their children to any house school. Not because they class themselves, but because they know your upbringing affects your image, your self-concept, your self-image, who you think you are, what you think you are, what you think you can do. So pay attention to the quality of upbringing you have. Can I hear amen? amen. How many of you got that? You got that? Hmm? That's number one. You see now that it affects whether you can be independent or what? Dependent. If a lady hear me, if you don't know how to cook, it's a minus. It's what? Uh-huh. Don't let guys take you to Italy and when you eventually have children, will you take them to Italy every day? Say, <laughs> okay. Tunde, you and your brother will go to Italy in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. Then you get to the Italy one day, they said, what you want to buy is not available. What will you do to your children? Eh, what is it? You what? You. <laughs> That's a dysfunctional person. <laughs> Look, this is just.
just a digression. When we just got married, we didn't have the kind of comfort we have now. So, for us to cook, we need to think. We need to think because our budget for what we will eat was limited. When you've not been cooking from university, when you know how to cook concussion, <laughs> dry pepper was my friend. Once you put dry pepper, onions, inside the beans, wow, people will come from the next house to eat. <laughs> we were able to cope, I and my wife. So you see people whose upbringing affects their what? Self-esteem. Let me give you another example of the power of upbringing. When I was going to go to secondary school, because my father was a military officer, and they were posting him from here to that place. So instead of giving us a disjointed secondary school, if your father is in Lagos now, they post him to a bad no. That means they will change your school, Abby. So he said no. He said, let all of us go to body house. So they threw me inside one body house. In that body house, the first day I arrived there, <laughs> guess the first encounter. All my life, I've been hearing about snake. I've not seen snake before. I saw it that day. So, it became part of what? My upbringing. After by the time I would get to form three, me and snake, we became friends. When I see snake, I will chase the snake. Except the snake escape. If it doesn't escape, I will kill it. When I got to university, we were all playing. Suddenly snake appeared. People we no see snake before. They ran. Then I faced the snake. And I used my shoe to hit the head on the wall and it died. I became a star. Your upbringing can make you a star. Yes, sir. When you get to a place where people don't have the same upbringing yes, that you have. Are you, hey, hey. You see, Pastor Femi, he take like, that guy, they anointed. <laughs> <laughs> now they anointed with that one. Now upbringing. So, upbringing matters a lot. And if you are here and you don't have a pleasant upbringing, God has made provision by giving you churches where you can get spiritual fathers who can give you the right of bringing. Just look for the right one. Mm -hmm. Let's go to number two. Environment. Environment will affect your self-esteem. One of our ministers here, he was traveling to America with his family. I know if you've been in the aircraft before, before the aircraft takes off, they will switch off all the power sources to, to able to give the engine maximum pressure to be able to fly. So, this small boy was inside the aircraft. They switch off all the lights inside the aircraft. After the aircraft had taken up and was balanced, they switch on all the lights. The boy just said, NEPA! <laughs> Environment. Oh, dig bag me. When you play long The boy was entering plane for the first time. He had been in an environment where they take light and bring light. So he thought he was there. <laughs> so his father just said, "This man, I do." <laughs> Amen. Are you getting me? The environment also affects your self-esteem. The environment. The where? Environment. So be very careful the kind of environment you roam in. If you roam in the wrong environment, it may influence your behavior and eventually affect your transition. You get me? If an ejaculate boy tells you I love you, and somebody from VI say I love you, they are saying the same word, though, but they may mean two different things. Because the environment is different. <laughs> are you following? <clears throat> so environment matters. There was a film, I can't remember the name of the film now, but many years ago, 
it was Arnold Schwarzenegger and one short man that acted the film. According to the film, they were twins. But in the midst of the hospital they were born, somebody stole one and he grew up among gangsters. Uh -huh. He grew up around gangsters. The other one grew up in a decent place. You won't even believe they came out from the same womb. Because when you find yourself in different environments, your paths will change. You get me? So be careful. What? The environment. Are you enjoying yourself now? Eh? Let's take the number three and let me round up. <sighs> How many of you enjoyed it? Uh -huh. Number three. What affects our self-esteem? Experiences that we have experiences that we have. Let me talk about experiences. Experiences. Let me tell you, there are bad experiences and there are good experiences. The experiences that we encounter while growing up, they shape also. If, while you are young, dog has attacked you before, there is no way anybody can persuade you to pass via doggies. Because you already have a mental picture of all dogs as dangerous animals. Has it happened to you before? Isaac will be a witness to this one. I went to visit one of my clients in VI one day. Their dog that is a pet is as tall as this chair. Peto is peto. <laughs> pet. <laughs> When I brought Isaac and Joshua in, they were younger. They became the pets. <laughs> where they sat down is where they sat down. <laughs> because there are certain things you have not seen before in your life. And you are seeing for the first time, you'll be gentle. <laughs> the dog, he won't come and meet you. By sitting down where he is, you will behave yourself. <laughs> when we got out, they told me they will stay in the car. <laughs> you go have a meeting. Experiences. Experiences. 